Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant. Power to come on now, the podcast. I'm your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomat. Let's just jump right on in on this one. Thank you all again for being a member of our Come On Now, the podcast family. Please do subscribe, like, and follow. Ring that bell so you get up to the minutes updates on our content. Let's jump right in. As I mentioned, Cam Ward has done it again. Yes, he has. He just broke 15,000 career passing yards, led the University of Miami Hurricanes to a 50 to 15 blowout of the University of South Florida. Now you may ask, is this a big deal? Absolutely, it's a big deal. This USF team a week ago had Alabama at Alabama in a 21-16 game with five minutes left. Five minutes left. They had Bama in a dogfight. Now, yes, Bama ended up winning 42 to 16. They blew it out in the last five minutes. But that was a tough game for Bama on its home field. Miami traveled to Tampa. You had a rabid fan base in South Florida, in Tampa, cheering on the Bulls. And they competed. They absolutely competed. First half was a dogfight. Mistakes were made by the Hurricanes, without a doubt. They made mistakes in that first half. Cam Ward threw an interception. It wasn't an interception, though. He he threw a ball that hit Jacoby George square on his chest. He caught the ball. He made a move. He ran about a couple yards, and then he just dropped the ball. That's not an interception. That's a fumble. I've watched that play multiple times. I do not see how that was called an interception. That was a fumble. Yes, it was caught in the air by the defensive player, but Jacoby George just dropped the ball after he caught it and ran with it a yard or so. Like, that's a fumble. All that said, the Hurricanes' defense in the first half was not looking all that great. They were being hit with these misdirection trick plays, getting absolutely torched by Sean Atkins. I mean, my God, that number 38, Sean Atkins, gave the Hurricanes fits. 5'10", 186-pound senior out of Vieira, Florida. He looked good. I mean, it looked like we didn't game plan too much for Sean Atkins, even though he had 92 catches last year for 1,054 yards and seven touchdowns. He gave the Hurricanes fits, and then Miami adjusted. And that was the good thing to see in this game. Miami can score on anybody. You can see that they have weapons everywhere. I, I mean, they got some dogs out there this year. This is this is something that I'm just loving. As a Hurricane fan, I'm loving it. Isaiah Horton is a dog. Xavier Restrepo is a dog. Sam Brown catches a 76-yard touchdown pass, a dog. Damian Martinez, a dog. Elijah Arroyo, a dog. You got dogs on this team, man. Bro, Mark Fletcher's a dog. I mean, and Cam Ward is the lead dog. This is this this is sweet. Cam Ward goes 24 of 34, 404 yards. Three touchdowns, one pick, five carries, 43 yards. You can't, I mean, the game was 22-15 at halftime. There were some things, of course, with clock management that once again. I just I pray they don't rear it doesn't rear its ugly head when Miami plays at Louisville or at Syracuse at the end of the year or even against Florida State. You know, I, I expect Miami to bludgeon the Seminoles, but you know, you always have that possibility that that rivalry game does something to somebody and makes it closer than it should be, albeit people say it's always close. It's not always close. Uh, half of the matchups over the last 15 years have been absolute whitewashes. They've been blowouts. So to say that they're always close games, that's just factually incorrect. Yes, last year's game was 27-20. Miami had a chance. Maybe if Miami had started its starting quarterback and not gone to the backup 
for his first start on the road at Florida State, who was undefeated, Miami had a shot. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Miami had a shot. and um, But it's been half and half with Miami plays Florida State blowout or close game over the last 15 years. So that automatic statement of, oh, it's always close. No, it's not. Miami got beat. The, beat the, <laughs> Miami got the brakes beaten off them two years ago. Florida State got the brakes beaten off them like four years ago. So it, it, you have Miami has the talent and the skill to absolutely slaughter Florida State this year and should do and they should do so. But South Florida is a tough team. You have players that know each other. Byron Brown is a good player. He's a good quarterback, tough dude, makes plays, breaks tackles. I mean, he was getting hit. Left and right, breaks, tackles. I mean, just a tough, tough guy. Miami got four sacks on him. I mean, probably could have had more, but he's breaking tackles. You know, Miami's offensive line has been exceptional. No sacks. Only three tackles for loss. Cam Ward is a magician with the ball. Even when he's missing, he's not missing to put the team in a bad position. He hits Sam Brown on a big 76-yard pass play. That Sam Brown play was the play right before the half that made it 22 to 15. So it didn't ice the game. It, it, it but it brought it changed the momentum immediately after a USF had taken a 15-14 lead after a 19 play 66-yard drive that ended in a field goal. Immediately Miami responds, hits a 76-yard touchdown pass to Brown. Now, now this is where I want to have this conversation about game management. The Canes decide to go for two before the half. Now, I will say this. I am never a proponent of chasing points. You go for two when you have to go for two. This thing of going for two in the second quarter because you're going to be up 21-15 instead of 22-15, <clears throat> I just don't agree with it. I, I just don't agree with it. You don't do that. And you want to know what happened when Miami did that? Miami lines up to go for two and then calls a freaking timeout. How? Why? Yes, Miami got the conversion to go up 22-15. But why are you calling timeout on a conversion play? You lined up to go for two. And now you're going to call timeout in that situation. Miami burned timeouts. In the first half, Miami burned a timeout defensively because they got tired. I think they burned it late in the – where was it? It was a timeout that they burned. Miami burned a timeout on one of these drives. Yeah, Miami burned a timeout with a minute to go. It's third and two at the Miami nine. Um, and, they, and they burned a timeout. And um, – it just didn't make a lot of sense to me at that moment why you're burning time. I mean, I get it. They were tired, but you burn timeouts in ways that are just so inefficient. Oh, here's the example. Here's what killed me. Miami has it after they burn that timeout. It's sec It's third and 11. It's third and 11. USF commits a false start. There's a minute 36 to go in, this, in the first half. Goes to third and 16, and they complete a screen that goes for 64 yards. And you're sitting here saying, what is going on? This is just sloppy ball. You got guys so out of position. I don't even know what defense you're calling. This is a simple situation of you play to protect. I mean, they got two plays, well, maybe three. They're either going to run the ball, make it burn a timeout. They're going to run a screen. Or they're going to throw the ball down the field. So you got three options. There's going to be nothing underneath. They're not going to risk having an incomplete pass. Other than, and I don't even think they were going to go down the field. I thought that you had two options, run the ball or a screen. They weren't doing anything that was beyond five yards. So I know I'm kind of rambling right now. But they're not doing anything that's going beyond five yards in terms of risking having an incomplete pass with a minute and a half to go in the half and then Miami doesn't have to take the timeout. So to get beat on a screen pass, what? 
for 64. That put them in the position to kick a field goal, which they missed. It's funny. They make the 58-yarder, the 51-yarder, the 45-yarder, and then they miss a 31-yard field goal. And I thought that miss really, really hurt South Florida emotionally, mentally. It, it, it really hit them a little bit. They come out second half, and it's uh, four plays, a punt, and Miami comes back and pops 12 plays, 80 yards, 29-15, and that was pretty much the ball game. That was the ball. Because after that, USF punts again. Miami scores again. It's 36 15. You can say that was the ball game. But Miami's defense in the second half really shored up some things. They made some adjustments defensively, which you could see. They, they, they took away those ridiculous pass patterns that 38 was grabbing over and over again. What the fuck? What the hell is his name again? What was his name again? 38. Uh, Sean Atkins. They took away those pass patterns to him that, you know, that were going underneath. But they took away those, those those little pass patterns that they were running to Atkins. I mean, he's a good player. He's a player that you'd love to have on your team. He reminds me of Brexton Berrios. Uh, you know, and you look at him, you're like, oh, that guy can't do it. No, nah, he's a good ball player. <laughs> he's a ball player. And that kid's going to be a pro. I, I'm, I'm dead ass. He's going to be a pro. He's a Wes Welker, Julian Edelman Brexton Barrios type. He's one of those types of guys. I mean, heck, I think I think Restrepo was one of those types of guys. I think Restrepo is a little bit better in terms of downfield, but I think that they're, they're all very, very similar in nature. Um, Isaiah Horton has been absolutely awesome. He's been absolutely awesome. Really, really good. Really good. You, 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 you a guy that has really taken steps forward. He had 13 catches last year. He's got 19 for 278 in four games. I, he's he's taking some steps forward, and, and I, I really like what I'm seeing with, with Isaiah Horton. Big time, big time, big time. Overall, 50 to 15 over USF. That was a nice, nice win. And now you're looking at next week playing at playing against Virginia Tech on Friday at home. So we will see how it looks when we jump into ACE. We I have to avoid saying we as a, you know because I am I'm trying to be objective. The Miami Hurricanes have to you know jump into ACC play and handle business. Look, the Hurricanes schedule is is turning out to look like powder puff. I'm, I'm you got to be honest. It's looking powder puffy. There's nothing on here that scares you. The the most nerve wracking game is probably at Louisville, and and Miami should absolutely drop kick Louisville. Miami's better than Louisville. I mean, clearly better than Louisville. Um, but Louisville's got a good team. And that's the one game that will be the, the real litmus test for this team because I don't think FSU gives them much of a of a, of a fight. The Cal game at, at Cal, Cal just lost to Florida State in a game it should have won, gave away in my opinion. But Cal, the, 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 the concern on Cal is that you're flying 3,000 miles to play them. So it's something new that hasn't been done for quite some time. Georgia Tech is later on at Georgia Tech. They seem to always give Miami fits, but I'm going to tell you what right now. Cam Ward's going to win the Heisman Trophy. Cam Ward is going to win the Heisman Trophy. Before you tell me something different, Jaden Daniels won the Heisman Trophy last year with four losses. He, he won the Heisman with four losses. Cam Ward has not played in the final seven minutes of any game this year. He hadn't played in the fourth quarter of the first three games, if my memory serves correct. I don't think he played the fourth quarter of the of the Florida game. Maybe someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but I know he didn't play at the end of that game. Um, <clears throat> Cam Ward left the game at the 744 mark because he didn't come back in after that. He was out of the game on their next possession. So Cam Moore did not play in the final 744 of this game. And he is putting up ridiculous numbers. And he just looks so composed. And that's what's so impressive about him is he just looks so composed. And that's the impressive thing. Actually, he did leave, he did play until there was four minutes to go in the Florida game. So I, I stand corrected. But, man, Cam Moore is special. I, I'm loving what I'm seeing from him. He – He's got an opportunity here to play with talented players around him. 
And he looks absolutely sensational doing just that. He makes good throws. He's on target. He's, he, he's uh, what's the word? He's accurate. Um, I do think that he does have some deep ball issues. I will say that. I have to look, call the good with the bad. I don't think he throws the best deep ball. When I say deep ball, I'm talking about, I'm talking about, you know, flies. You know, you're going down 50 yards. The pass to, Isaiah, to, to Sam Brown wasn't a 50-yard play. It was a, it was a BB. I mean, that was a dart. Whereas there was a throw down the field early on. I think it was in the first half. Wide receivers wide open, and he underthrew him. It, it, you know, so that's one of those situations where you look at a play like that and you wonder, does he have that long ball, throw it 60 yards down the field type of arm strength? We haven't seen it yet, but that was the play – um, that I that I recall where he was he underthrew the receiver who was wide open by a mile and did not complete the pass. Where was that play? Camera Ward deep pass left completion. Uh, I don't know if it was the pass. I don't, I don't know if it was the pass to Jacoby George. And Miami ended up punting, and then we had a it was a penalty on Miami, but I'm I think that might have been the pass. I think that was the pass, because it was one there was one deep one where he just under threw the receiver by, just way. I mean you got you got you got to make a better throw than that. You got to make a better throw. You know, so we shall see. I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just checking the the play by play. It had to be that play. It had to be that play. So I want to see if he can make that type of throw downfield because it was underthrown. The receiver's wide open. You gotta make to me, you gotta make that throw. So I do question if he has that type of arm strength. I really don't care. Let me let me put it there. I don't really care. It will matter more for the NFL. I I, I like the intermediate stuff, that 20 to 30 yard intermediate downfield stuff. He throws darts on those. I mean, here he's crisp. He is cr hella crisp. So Hell of a performance by the Miami Hurricanes, 50 to 15 winners over South Florida. I know I babbled a little bit on a few topics back and forth, but oh, what about that 91 yard run by Jordan Lyles? My God, that was beautiful. Jordan Lyles, a 91 yard run. I mean, he that guy thought he had the angle, and that those afterburners were just turned on. Impressive. Miami's got talent, man. Miami has some talent this year. What are they going to do next year at quarterback? I don't know, but they have a talent. They're, they're, it just shows you what a quarterback can do for a team, a real quarterback, what a real quarterback can do for a team. Changes everything because you could have put a number of other guys back there who are less talented, and they would not be performing like this. There's a, there was a few plays where he does a drop back. He turns his entire back to the offensive line. He's trusting his offensive line is holding their blocks. And then he does a quick turn and dumps it off real fast to the running back who's wide open or to the tight end who's wide open. But he's trusting his line. And I think that's what's really special is he's not getting tough. That's the way you – that's how, that's how you make QBs look great. Keep them away from the pressure. And even when he feels a little pressure, you still don't get him. You're still not getting him. So, anyhow, that's about it for this one. Um Looking forward to next Friday, well, this Friday, against Virginia Tech at home. I will be in the building. Well, let's get it on. Let's go, Canes. Let's get it on. Let's get it on. Let's keep rolling along. Last year, this is when Miami stubbed its toe, week five, against Georgia Tech. Let's not have that happen again. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, subscribe, follow. Come on now.